Bullhead by debut director Michael R. Roskam is a brooding social realist horror story played out in the wintry landscape of Flanders where the cattle have been pumped full of illegal growth hormones. Matthias Schonartz plays the baleful local enforcer, nursing an old injury and surely pointed towards disaster. Peter, Matthias Schonartz attracted a lot of great reviews for his role in, in Jacques Odiar's Rust and Bone last year, but he's just as good in this, isn't he? I think he is just as good. I think he's absolutely terrific. I think the film is absolutely fascinating. It's not quite as a positive and likeable a character as Rust and Bone. Rust and Bone, he showed that he's not just a tough guy, he can be sensitive as well. And that's what made the film and made his performance so kind of attractive. Here, it's, mu it's much darker. Uh, and Bullhead kind of had me gripped. I, I felt that it was uh, a new genre, kind of Belgian mm. Gothic, yeah. Belgian gangster Gothic. I mean, I like, I can't think Rustic of Rustic Noir. Rustic Noir, like uh, Bruno Dumont's Flandre, and uh, another movie called Calvaire was, was like that. Again, it's in the badlands mm. of Belgium, where you don't quite know where, where you are, almost. It's like kind of geographically and culturally very remote, mm. uh, uh, like Louisiana or something. Very, very gripping stuff. Uh, and Mathieu Schoenart's performance, really kind of disturbing and, and powerful. Catherine, is that a selling point for you, that it's showing a part of the world that we don't really see on screen? I think so, and I mean, actually, we're sort of vaguely sort of feel we're familiar with it from, say, the Dardenne Brothers films, mm. but it's a much more, it reminded me of anything, of things like The Long Good Friday, with mm. the sort of strange car parks and the gulls and the blokes in horrible jackets and, and the sort of, and the basic kind of stupidity of a lot of the people as well, mm. but not in a comedy way, in really just quite a grossy, muddy way. I thought it was wonderful. I, I mean, it, it really is gripping. And all the people around are fantastic. The kids are incredible. Mm, mm. Maybe they breed them like that over there. Because, the, you know, in the Darden Brothers films, you've got great kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as I say, entirely without the Darden sort of high-mindedness. It's very, very dark. It really is. And the idea of this guy, this, this bullhead J Jackie, who we see in the very first scene being a horrible bully, mm. a kind of terrifying bully, and you think, what a, what a nasty piece yeah. of work. And of course, that's what he is. But then, brilliantly, the film unfolds and unfolds, and you realise there's a very particular reason for him it's being real... involved in the testosterone business. Yes, it, it's, it starts out that you, you think you know exactly where it's going, but it's basically a deconstruction of yeah. macho brutality, isn't it? Yes, and that brilliant, the brilliantly deferred flashback scene, I just wasn't expecting a wow, you know, 20 years ago, wow, now what's going on? Weirdly, it reminded me a little bit of the flashback scenes in, in Hanukkah's Hidden, you know, the, the farmyard scene of mm. something very horrible has happened to some, some kid here. And we, we're seeing it at a distance. We don't quite understand what's happened. And uh, time and space have lent disenchantment to the view. Uh, it's, it's a very well-made film. It's, it's terrifically good. Any problems with it? Did you think it, I, I worried that it got a little bit kind of overblown and operatic towards the end. A little long, a little, you know, could have done with a few more ladies maybe. It wasn't very, it wasn't really a chick flick, but I guess <laughs> not every film no. can be.